And Butters, welcome to Nature of Reality Radio. I came across you on Facebook. Did I come across you anywhere beforehand? Uh, I don't know, but I looked at your websites after seeing you on Facebook, uh, all the things that you cover, and I discovered, well, this is definitely someone who's worthy of being a valuable guest on my show to wake people up in this time of, of transformation and everything. You've got 21 mutual friends with me on Facebook with some uh, familiar names that I see there and some faces that I've had uh, as guests on this show before. Um, maybe um, their names may come up in this uh, interview every so often, but this is your chance to have glory. So before I give you the chance to tell your life story, to all my listeners, this is something I'm probably going to sound like a broken record on, but I need to make a regular habit of for as long as this is going to be the case with this show. I can't monetize on YouTube. Ever since I uh, reapplied for monetization on Independence Day, they claim that I that they're going to try to keep looking to see if I am able to be monetized, but I'm sure they're just screwing with me. That's another way of saying we're never going to let you monetize on YouTube again. So all of my interviews are also uploaded to cost.tv after I upload them to YouTube shortly after. So all my listeners who, when you upload the video to YouTube, um, please listen to on YouTube for only 15 seconds just for the sake of giving me a, a, view, a view count credit. And then the links will be to the cost.tv interviews will be in the YouTube video description. Please click on those and watch them on cost.tv to help me monetize using the blockchain feature that comes with watching videos on cost.tv. It's not much, but it's better than nothing. So with that being said, Ann Butters, thank you for uh, volunteering to be a guest on my show. And uh, kudos to your um, is she your publicist who I spoke to earlier, or is it your uh, oh, yes, Joyce Mason. biz manager, Joyce yeah. Mason? Yeah, I'm telling you what, man, she is a go-getter. You know, that's the thing. And, and thank you for having me um, on your show. It's it's awesome to be here. It's just, I think we're starting to realize that we don't have to be the best at everything and that you collaborate with people who are really amazing in their trade and in their skill and in their dharma and walking the path. And there's this alignment and it's, it's, in, it's, 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 it's it, it interjects such energy. It makes me level up in what I'm good at. And then I don't have to be good at what Joyce is good at. And Joyce doesn't have to be what I'm good at. We just keep, I mean, it's fun too, right? <laughs> right. So uh, you're from Hotlanta. I was in Atlanta back in 2015 on Independence Day. Um, during that time period, Independence Day um, in 2015 with some lady named um, Cynthia, I believe her name was. What? Huh, maybe I'm drawing black on her name. It's been so long, but it was a great uh, retreat center to be in, very nature lover's paradise in uh, Atlanta, which um, conspiracy theorists have a field day with that place, saying it's one of the hot spots with an underground for the um, for the Illuminati bloodlines in America. But um, it's... Uh, a lot of subject you just touched, uh, touched on right there. I mean, I, I do know this, and uh, I, I, I went to school where, in the, and I won't say where, um, I won't say the place right now because it's still there, but there was a, a, a Ku Klux Klan tunnel underneath the rectory of the Catholic school that I went to in the city of Atlanta. And mm -hmm. that tunnel is still there. I know that. I know that for a fact. <laughs> so it's true. But thank you for having me on to the show for today. <laughs> You're welcome. So now I will uh, shut up and put myself on mute. I do not have Alex Jones-itis. I don't interrupt my guests. So you are free to tell your life story from a primary source perspective regarding what you experienced and what causes you to um, what caused you to do the stuff that you do. Yoga, meditation, Reiki, South Frequency, healing, LMT, and everything else. That <laughs> So you got the floor. Okay, well, thank you so much for that, and, and it, feel free to stay unmuted, because I really enjoy the banter and the collaboration with you as well, Andrew. But, um, so, basically, I've always been a little bit different. I did have a brain injury when I was younger um, by a sailboat boom, and um, I could no longer read from right to left, or left to right, or up, down, or down. You know, I just couldn't read. So I learned to read lips and, and that only got me so far. And then I learned how to sleep with books under my pillow, even at a very early age, because I knew that the alphabet was sacred geometry and it just stand for alpha, beta, 
So I knew that I was able to draw that information into my energy field, even as a very young person. Um, but now fast forward, you know, like everyone else does, I got involved in um, corporate world and I thought that it was really important when I was pushing a piece of paper from one corner of the desk to the other corner of the desk. But it was a bit like Groundhog Day and traumas and dramas and accidents and shocks kind of get in the way and, you know, life happens. And um, I was experiencing, um, let's see, six herniated desks, discs, two torn meniscus, a broken toe, a broken hip, a torn pelvis, um, a torn uh, scapula. I broke out in a lupus rash. I was going through a divorce. Um, my mother was dying and I uh, pretty much didn't know that I was going to make it because I was having grandma seizures and seizures and <clears throat> just, I think some people call it a mental breakdown and I really feel like it was a nervous breakthrough because like many of us that are in our, you know, in our walking in our Dharma um, energy or, you know, the bioelectric energy, um, I just started understanding things without having to effort. You know, I would go out and meditate. Maybe I'd crawl to meditate because I wasn't feeling particularly good. And it just information would come to me and I just had to align with it. Um, so, you know, of course, I became trained in the art of yoga and the art of Reiki and pranic healing and, and quantum manipulation. I studied with someone here um, and, and, and he helped me what I call that I do. I work the precursor body. I help people plug back in something called the noddies. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. Are you familiar with the noddies? <laughs> the noddies? No, it, it's not. Cool? It's not like every every you know uh, man's wish here. Um, it's the N A D I apostrophe S system. So it's the energy okay. system. And and basically, imagine if you wanted to use um, a toaster. You know, you call it a toaster, but it's not really toasting bread until it's got an energetic connection. So you take that plug and you put it into an outlet, and the outlet has been grounded somehow miraculously through a transformer system that's outside of the house and then it goes to a pole or underground and it eventually goes to a main uh you know a charging central station well it's not any different in our body you know we've got licensed massage therapists and orthopedic surgeons and they're focused on muscles and bones you got chiropractors working on bones and and maybe even orth uh, orthogonal which is trying to get the whole structure of the body into alignment, but not too many people are working on the precursor body, which is, is really where consciousness resides. That's where the first place that hormones have a connection. And um, so um, I was having seizure after seizure after seizure, and I was, you know, traveling. It's called being an experiencer. Um, you know, I've watched some of your shows and I know that you've talked to people that have had these, um, these gifts that come forward. Um, you, I know for me, I can't leave Earth's atmosphere after a seizure, during a seizure and not come back and be just diametrically different. I, I, I've, I've traversed a different atmosphere. Maybe my body didn't travel with me maybe my body stayed in that stagnant state but i know that i traveled as an experiencer i traveled the akashic and i could witness myself and and i would come back with information not just for healing myself but how to help others and just some crazy stuff happened um i i know in particular um i awoke from a really gnarly seizure in uh instead of doing you know the normal thing that somebody might consider being normal which would be to clean up after a seizure you know there's there's you know things like vomit happen or you've fallen down or you know you've soiled whatever it is and i didn't care i just went straight to the computer and i put in a name of a physicist that came to me when i was in that altered state and um i I put it in YouTube so I wouldn't forget it. I, I wasn't trusting of, you know, remember seizures. I was still stuttering. I was still slurring and candidly it follows much like a Tourette's path. I was swearing <laughs> and um, 
it was uh, very painful. And when I would come to, I would look up that man's name. And to this day, that's, it was that phrase. It was that moment. It was, uh, the mm -hmm. scientific term was called um, contact annihilation. <laughs> and I kind of laughed because it felt like it explained my marriage, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it, it wasn't. It was how you can penetrate the body through a different aspect of the body. So not so much the physical body, but maybe the gas side of the body. And they were accessing something that could change something. It was the possibility of changing the airless cell of something that was sick inside the body. And I smiled like a Cheshire cat because I knew I was onto something. And in fact, I'm getting goosebumps right now. The, the spiritual goosebumps that people get when truth comes forward. But this man's name was Dan Winter. And if you've never heard of him, please Google him. He's a brilliant physicist. And um, it's because of him, I, it's not because of him that I have frequency machines, because I had a fascination with it long before him, but I attribute him to helping me learn how to not just save myself, but to work on that precursor body to help other people trend center and to get people plugged back in. Thank you. Uh at the end of your uh, intro there? That's the end of the intro. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome. So um, first, uh, first of all, before I um, start using your site as a guide to uh, get some talking points out, just for some clarification here, there's also another site, beyondtransformation.org. I uploaded that, but you're none of the people on the Meet the Team on that um, website. Um, does the yoga, the meditation, and the shamanic work. Um, if you dig a little deeper, you'll see that I am on that. Um, it is a collaboration of some pretty amazing people. Um, their whole philosophy is based on um, having the vision to help people and communities and organizations and institutions sort of see the world just a little bit differently. They have um, some incredibly valuable ideas that need to be voiced. And so they, the reason that I, you know, there's always somebody that's gonna come out of the woodwork and want you to collaborate with them when they find out that you're fully cleared, psychic, medical, intuitive, and non-medical intuitive. But I chose this group in particular because they're very visionary. Um, they understand the possibilities of seeing and experiencing what's happening in the chaos of the three-dimensional world or the 3D world or life as traditional most people know it and operate in. And then there's this sort of um, uh, whole um, historical information to help them understand fuel with new ideas, how to elevate some things that you can do nutrition-wise, some things to understand bringing collaborative people to do the gene keys and the human design group, astrology, I do I Ching readings. Uh, there's the ecstatic dance and somatic release. Everybody is trained in some type of, you know, QHHT or hypnotherapy. And it's a really cool collaboration. And what's really nice is it's donation based. And that's the reason why I chose them, Andrew, because I know what it was like to have experienced having a credit card turned off and not having access to $1 and not being able to feed my kid. And that's the reality. And, it's, it, and it happened in a split second, and I took back control of my life. But I'm not alone in this. There's men and women that are struggling, and we want to make sure that you know that no matter where you're from, no matter what your socioeconomic structure is, no matter what your cultural background is, no matter what your religious background is, I don't care what your skin color is, your eye color is, your hair color is, or what kind of car you drive. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is creating um, bioelectric centered human beings that bring some level of love and peace and centeredness to this otherwise kind of trauma infused society. Well, there's many different ways to um, try to heal the trauma and uh, one way that I'm certainly very familiar with, which I see on your site here, Pyramid Healing. Uh, Robert Potter, who's a friend of mine on Facebook, I've been to several of his conferences and not going to be able to attend the one that he's going to be holding. Um, or did it already get held? I'm not sure. But um, he already he's... had it. Yeah, he had it recently. I know Rob because Rob it was introduced to me by uh, Chad Edward, who goes by the name 
the Chom and Shaman because it's a Massachusetts sort of twang to it. But I'm actually wearing a Fred Bell creation right now, the one that has the 144 pyramids on it. And I had the kinesiology testing to know which stone that I needed that lays right on my solar plexus. And so that's a really big part of my healing. I use that along with the pyramid that Rob sent me. I've got a 51% nine foot pyramid that I do meditations using the plasmonics frequency so that we can access people's highest perspective and get data. The number one commodity in the world now. We get information here and we, we try to affect healing. Miracles can happen. It's just that you have to be aligned with being alchemically based. Yes, and I bought uh, Rob Potter's three different um, pyramids that you can wear on the head. The one that's uh, gold plated, the one that's um, copper plated with gold below it, and the one, the most expensive one and the most powerful one that has silver on the top with copper below that and a layer of gold below that. And I think it's nickel that's the... Um, Yes. The one that makes the private, yeah. Um, however, I only wear the silver one. I've discovered there's really no sense in wearing the other ones. I've discovered the other ones, I have a use for them. I put all my supplements in them to keep yeah. those supplements at the best um, quality and make sure that the supplements stay fresh, even if, if they were to go back past their expiration date. Maybe you can help enlighten on what exactly pyramids do and specifically the pyramid that i'm using with that i wear on my head the silver one um if you can compare and contrast i'm sure i've done it with rob potter when i had him on the show before but if you know what the difference may be between the gold copper and silver pyramids that you would wear on your head and what i'm doing regarding putting the supplements inside the my supplements in the pyramid to make sure that they stay in tip-top shape what exactly is the pyramid doing to make that possible well, first of all, I'm smart enough to know that Rob is a far better expert. That being said, I'm just going to tell you a little cursory information that I know. I know that in our physical body, we are composed of certain elements and minerals, and I won't go into the whole science of it. But we also have carbon, which is pyramid shaped. So we have pyramidal energy deep within our body. The issue, however, is, is that we become through lifestyle. I'm just going to use that word, you know, nature and nurture and lifestyle and food choices and the electromagnetic frequencies. Things get more than a bubble off plum. They just sometimes they, they just tilt and, and things get imbalanced. And so if if someone isn't feeling right, or if somebody has anxiety, it's just that there's a bubble off plum in some composition of minerals and the enzymes. And the pyramidal healing is able to almost kinetically bring that into alignment. And like I said, I'm, I'm smart enough to not go into greater detail because Rob, Rob really gets this stuff and he's a genius. And I haven't talked to him for a really long time. So, hey, Rob. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, people can check out my inter. I did two interviews with him. Um, the second one, for some reason, didn't seem to get as uh, popular view count as the first one that I did way back in the day. But um, definitely check uh, check those out. I cover a lot of things yeah. in those interviews with him. And um, let's uh, talk about the. Uh, I see under the key symbol here, key elements include uh, physical and psychic trauma recovery. Um, different kinds of healings, pranic healing, therapy, touch injury, rehabilitation. Well, I suppose the best way to go about this would be to ask you to compare and contrast all of the um, key elements include here, all the ones that are on here, which ones work best for what things. Please compare and contrast them to the best of your ability. Take as long as you may need because certain healings are... Uh, are better than others and certain healings require uh, more than one person than some you can do on your own and, and whatnot. So for those that are not familiar with this, I'm sure my whole audience for the most part is familiar, but just, you know, I always have to do it for the sake of those who may be tuning in that are new. Um, hey. All these uh, uh, ways to heal. You got the floor. Well, I mean, you know, it starts with if it is to be, it is, if it is to be, it is up to me. I think that's the first thing that people have to understand that you cannot project, you cannot buy uh, your brain aligning. 
you can't buy that on aisle two, not at any grocery store in the world. You can't get, you can't grow that in the ground. <laughs> this is an energy thing. And so people are capitalizing on this and they're banking on maintaining the integrity of a fear-based mindset so that it perpetuates um, sales of, of something. And so first and foremost, um, and most of the various shamanic practitioners that I know will tell you that you really do not need anything to heal. Now, there are shortcuts and there are things that you can do and that there's things. So um, vibration of some form or another um, on a higher end, you might have something like a power plate and that might just knock somebody down a couple thousand notches of energy. So it takes somebody who's having a big panic attack and it just knocks their energy down. Those are some you know, really powerful ways to, to just knock somebody into a present moment. But the reality is rumination is, is kind of like the new black. People want to ruminate and just, you know, give the story. It's the constant story. And, you know, I don't want to hear the story. The story isn't relevant. What's relevant is why are you perpetuating the root cause and why are you still allowing that, that pinprick into your sphere? So I don't necessarily speak that way to someone because that's not my role. I'm not the therapist. That would be my partner, uh, Laura Kahn, over at Beyond Transformations. Um, my job is to try to help them trend center in from a harmonic state, an internal harmonic state. And um, sometimes we have to do shortcuts. We have to access through the ear, through auricular touch. And uh, sometimes it's just a matter of they lay down or they sit down and we access even over a Skype uh, conversation, we can access energy just by noticing how someone is just simply seated. Um, so, you know, it really is different strokes for different folks because some people are super calm, but they're not the least bit happy. And then you have other people that are, you know, hugely hyperactive and, um, and, and, and they're miserable. Um, so, you know, being able to see, hear, touch, taste, and feel in color, sound, and frequency, um, that's enough for me. I can tell telepathically traditionally what's happening in the body. It's just being able to see what they're receptive to hearing without ahimsa, as they say in yoga, doing harm. You don't want to do harm or awaken something in someone that they're not ready to hear or align with. Yes, yeah, so when it comes to healing others and uh, whether it's okay to do spiritual healings on others when they don't necessarily give you permission, this seems to be one of those agree to disagree kind of fields because I've uh, tried to utilize other people's work for this and uh, uh, many times I get blessed, but every so often someone decides to um, pick a bone with me about it. Um, Daniel Teague of Vega Star Healings, he seems to be my number one gift of choice when it comes to wanting to do spiritual healings on myself and also as a gift for another person. Daniel T got his abilities from a car accident that caused a near-death experience, which allowed him to enter the spiritual realm. And ever since then, he's had the ability to do all sorts of spiritual things like clear our negative energies, balance and enhance the chakras, cut cords, um, and all sorts of uh, wonderful thing, body armor, spiritual body armor, and you name it, uh, pyramid of healing, things like that and whatnot. And well, he um, allows people for all intents and purposes, like if you, um, let's say hypothetically, uh, someone stole from their parents years ago and they want to make amends for it and they call Daniel Teague and say, because I stole from my parents years ago, I want to give them a gift to make up for it. Can I pay you to balance out their chakras as a Mother's Day and a Father's Day gift for them or, or something like that? And uh, he would actually do that and you oh, don't even have to tell them. Mac, that is psychological and spiritual rape. Mm -mm, naughty, naughty, naughty. And that is said from non judgment. That's just truth. That's Akashic. Um, mm -mm. I, I would be bound in my stomach for that one. That's going to change karma. You, you're, you're saying he needs to ask um, the permission of the people he's doing the healing to in order to um, be able to do it? No one has access to anybody's energy unless it's been agreed upon. Nobody oh. can take that. 
that is not that is not that is not a factual contract well when you realize that we're all one consciousness you just, and people can remote view things is it really that hard to believe that he has the ability to tap into someone to heal them just like how we send love to a starving child in a third world country by radiating love from our heart chakra he just takes it to an extreme with his healings and and whatnot well, that's so. right we all have that you know when like i said when we when we leave earth's atmosphere we come back change so by location remote viewing precognition retrocognition we all have that capabilities just it is meant to be used in a benevolent way and not in a benevolent way and so um you know uh, you know however he chooses to do it is how he chooses to do it i i just know that um I think that that is a guilt conscious that's trying to use man-made money to clear an energy instead of an authentic um, energetic clearing. Maybe that person would be better off having their energies cleared. Right. Well, uh, I mean, I when it comes to people making money off spiritual work, um, if it's the only job they got, then, um, well, I don't think it should be a problem for uh, people to to charge for it if um, if they want to stay out of the matrix and not get involved in the nine to five realm and um, oh yeah and no I'm questioning um, being able to help people from a spiritual standpoint I just think you know profiting off of accessing on someone else's energy that hasn't been um, permitted just seems I don't know it just seems a little bit um, I don't know a little invasive perhaps one might say that, but uh, they also make the argument that when it comes to um, privacy at the spiritual level, well, there really is no privacy at the spiritual level because everything would be accessible to everybody. Although I don't really agree with those that say privacy exists because of some um, desire um, to hide something that you feel uncomfortable releasing as truth uh, i look at it as a matter of one not having authority over another if you decide that this person doesn't have any authority over me then i have the right to have privacy from them invading my privacy regardless of whether or not i feel uncomfortable about it but um i can absolutely wrap my head around that metaphor for sure um it's just you know maybe i just operate just a slight bit different and you know that's what makes the world go round. we're 7.28 billion people different strokes for different folks <laughs> right people I've, I've even heard people make the argument that the nsa surveillance system that edward snowden exposed is good for us because if, if that if that hadn't been released we'd never be able to release our uh, uh, get to our true spiritual level where everything is basically accessible to to everybody so we yeah. need to be uh, accustomed to being spied on or else we can't spiritually ascend do you uh, agree, yeah. that, agree or disagree have, with that yeah with that? without the end we never have more than the other at any one time i suppose uh so again i i guess i can really lean into that 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 thought process all right well uh shifting gears for a moment here you uh do a lot of a uh, yoga work uh, apparently and uh well i've taken a bit of a hiatus from yoga i was doing yoga tai chi and aikido but ever since the uh civilization shut down from the dreaded virus uh, took hold i've decided to um take a hiatus from that and pursue other interests among other things use the money to buy crystals and um and other things and well there are some yoga poses that i see here on this dot um from mind movies that i've downloaded uh for the chakras that are above the crown chakra starting with the soul star chakra going up to the um there's the uh divine gateway and the galactic uh chakra and uh the divine gateway chakra is the t uh the top one the 12th one and there's uh different um yoga poses that i recognize as uh having done to activate these chakras now um how does uh how exactly does one know that this specific yoga pose can activate this specific chakra that's ab above the crown chakra these um universal chakras as they're called um do you know anything about this uh 
phenomenon because uh, the child's pose of, of, of all things is the like the one that's supposed to be the uh, the one that connects you to the divine gateway, um, twelfth highest chakra. How about that? That's the pose you want to take if you want to activate that chakra of all things. So, well, I mean, your... I, there's a lot of people getting really fancy with stuff, and I think ultimately what's happened is. You know, like when I was first introduced to yoga, it was in uh, 1996 and I, I was practicing yoga on a little circle down in Hollywood uh, called Young Circle, I think was the name of it. And this little Indian man yelled at me the whole time I was in there and he said, go left and I went right and I, if I went right, he said left. I mean, he yelled at me the whole time, literally from the beginning to the end, but I didn't quit and it was like a thousand degrees in there, right? But I didn't quit and I left and I was like, I'm never eating curry again. I'm never going to, you know, I was just like filled with hate. I hate yoga. I hate yoga. I hate yoga until I found out what yoga really meant. And that wasn't yoga. Yoga doesn't mean that it has to be hot. Yoga doesn't mean that your headband has to match your pants. Yoga doesn't mean that you have to have a crystal in a certain spot or you even have to be on a mat. Yoga is, are you aware of your breath? Are you aware of the waves inside of your body? Do you feel the short waves? Do you feel the long waves? How is it affecting the body? Are you soft in your eyes? What's happening in your mouth? Can you hear the harmony of the beating of each portion of your body? How intricate can you listen with pinpoint precision to something that you think is hurting you and maybe it's coming from somewhere else and you're squeezing in that area and you're not gonna know that if all you're thinking about is accessing something, you know, with some intricate geometrical shape, and that's fabulous when you reach a certain point. Of course, there's, you know, grids that you can set. That's advanced, but most people just don't wanna feel like shit. Most people wanna feel okay. Most people wanna feel calm. They don't want their body to hurt and they want their body to feel well. And I think that not everybody can do a chaturanga dandasana, which is, um, you know, not a, a challenging pose for me to do today, thankfully. But when I was bed bound for 10 months and couldn't move and I was pretty sad and in pain, I was grateful to know that I was still doing yoga when I was flexing and pointing my feet. That's still yoga. It's still yoga when you twist your feet from that angle, you know, just knowing that people can sit in a chair and do yoga. Fishing is a meditation. Cutting vegetables to have a healthy rainbow balanced nutritional diet um, is a meditation so all of it is the union of the senses that's what yoga is it's to bring not just your physical eyes but the eye behind the eye so that you can see with your inner vision and your nose so that you can smell but you can smell beyond what's in your current etheric energy you're out and 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 your and your voice is not just it matching how you feel about yourself, but how you think about yourself and how you're showing up. And that's yoga. And then and hearing, you know, downloads from spirit to come to you. That's how businesses are born. You know, nothing happens in speed. <laughs> that's not where shifts happen. It's it's in the space and the antimatter. That's that's where it happens. And and to me, that's yoga. I don't know how to answer that question about where to place a, a certain crystal. I think if you're drawn to a certain crystal and it, and it feels right in your physical body, you know, close your eyes and see what it does to your energy body. And then with your eyes maybe closed, and of course you don't wanna be driving a tractor trailer or a bus or a car right now if I say close your eyes, but you know, feel it, like let the crystal inform you. If you're going to bring something in and you're going to use either a barter system or a man-made money system to do the exchange, you know, let it be meaningful. Don't do anything if it isn't. I mean, I know I was tuned out for a long time. I'd go to the store and I didn't know what color shirt to get. I'd find a shirt I like and I couldn't make a decision anymore because I was so, you know, I call it digital dementia. I, had, I was so cluttered with nonsense stories in my head when I wasn't centered that I would get, you know, four shirts of different colors and then I'd give them away. You know, it's it's a less is more and more is less mentality and then something magical 
can happen. And it shifts, it's something implodes, like Dan said, there's a contact annihilation with whatever that sickness is, whatever that addiction is, whatever that drama is, whatever that trauma is, whatever that accident is, whatever that shock is, whatever it is from whatever reality, everything is really actually okay all the time, no matter what. Well, that's, well, that's uh, a reassuring okay. thought that uh, everything is is okay, but um, you, you see the state of affairs going on in the world right now. You simply can't imagine that. Just look what uh, Black Lives Matter and Antifa are doing to the cities of America. I mean, how can you look at that and not feel uncalm or not feel... Uh, What's the secret to observing? Some, well, one would say, don't look at it at all. Don't watch the news. It's all designed to brainwash you and and whatnot. To... So you kind of just answered the question, I yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but then again, you don't want to be an, an ostrich and ignore these things because I've heard it say to um, disregard the control system that interferes with your free will will actually allow for them to interfere with your free will more than if you were to acknowledge it and uh, accept the fact that, well, you can't just be an ostrich with your head in the sand. So um, what is the, how exactly does one draw the uh, line to determine how much they should let uh, something bother them, I should say is the best way to phrase the question. Uh, how much should it bother you uh, that, that you're aware of it? How much should it bother you and make you feel that you have to do something about it? Um, to the point where it, it starts becoming harmful to you um, when, when you're trying to solve it to make better for everybody, but you're actually not going to make better for everybody because you're worrying about it too much, so it's becoming harmful. Is there a, any, like, I, I don't understand that? that one little bit. Can you maybe ask it in a different manner uh, for I, me? I know it's hard to, I know it's probably hard to, hard to explain, but, uh, you see, uh, people, it's an agree to disagree kind of thing regarding whether or not we should talk about um, fear porn things. Like people like Alex Jones and David Icke do all the time. They always seem to try to focus on every last negative thing that's still in existence to try to solve every weak link in humanity's chain to um, fight for truth and freedom. But many would assert that's really not the best way to go about it you should spend more time focusing on love. And well, I will admit, I myself have been critical of uh, David Icke saying that um, ever since he said in his um, Remember Who You Are talk at Wembley, that uh, ever since the mind calendar end date of December 21st, 2012, the vibrational frequency of the earth is going to keep increasing and increasing and increasing. He said this, it's going to be more love, more love and increasing and increasing. Well, he doesn't seem to act like he uh, goes along with that because he continues to this very day to always try to find a conspiracy in everything and talk about the negative in everything. And I can't help but be a little critical of him. I did just buy his new book, The Answer, which I intend to read before the end of 2024. But but still, it's um, kind of disturbing that he would continue to focus on the negative all the time when you probably should shift your attitude, one would think, with the vibrational frequency of the earth rising. So how does one know when to give up focusing on the negative entirely or will it that never be possible because there always going to is going to be a little bit left on uh in this reality of negativity right. i have an offering if you if, if if you uh if you would care to hear it okay i would replace the word you with i and sit with it everything that you said i would sit with it and figure out and take the word you out of it as if you're projecting it for me to solve because I'm not the least bit concerned about Ike. I'm not the least bit concerned about what's happening. It doesn't have any kind of charge in my reality. And I believe that it has a pretty significant one in yours for some reason. And um, I'd really like to see if there's a possibility that you can maybe work at neutralizing that and perhaps it might not take up so much space. Well, that's uh, good advice there. I mean, uh, 
I still intend to read his book, The Answer. I mean, as someone who's trying to come go to find truth uh, for the nature of reality, and no one has a tougher time understanding the nature of reality that I do. That's why I'm the host of the show. I kind of be a fool to not buy a book that's called The Answer, that's supposed to answer, well, <laughs> everything that remains unanswered. And uh, I have not seen any of the things that he's talked about in his life, talks about what's in the book, and don't want to spoil it. But um, but still, it's uh, reading a book, um, regardless of whether or not it's uh, fear porn or not, is always good for you, I'm sure. It always... Uh, gets your mind going and it's a shame a lot of people in the world don't um don't read i've gotten my knack, uh, knack for reading up a little bit more in the last couple months it waned a little bit over the past year but it seems to have come back and i'm really starting to look into it a little bit more and it's certainly helpful and uh, a lot of people need to be doing things um in this time of great challenge in society uh being shut down we all need to be in tune with ourselves and well I, I can't help but get the um, election involved because everybody says, I've heard people say that uh, whenever you got a big presidential election in a year, that's a big collective consciousness um, thing playing out on a massive scale. And this year it seems to be very prominent because you got a big egoed windbag on one side who on one hand, he bashes immigrants, but he also seems to want to fight for truth and the Constitution and wants to be the next JFK. Uh, and unfortunately, he's got people like Benjamin Netanyahu and Henry Kissinger holding his leash and keeping him from doing the best that he can be. Kudos to David Icke for exposing that fact. Uh, and on the other hand, you got this um, former vice president whose dementia is getting worse and worse every day. You uh, don't even want him to be president. You'd you don't even want his uh, California socialist, uh, communist um, vice presidential candidate to be um, the <laughs> president either but when this th happens in november it's going to play a big toll on our collective consciousness for sure and um i remember Corey good saying that a lot of the disclosure things that could potentially come out they want to bring it out but they said we are not going to bring this stuff out until after the election it's going to rattle too many cages and be too much of a shock to humanity system if we were to do it before the election so we need to let the election play out before we release this stuff but uh being the spiritual person that you are do you have anything to say about the way the upcoming election is playing with the collective consciousness and where you actually see um this uh this going with society well, I'm going to take a nice deep breath in from that. <laughs> um, I really just don't even know how to respond to that. So um, I think I'd just like to change the channel a lot and maybe invite you to engage in that kind of conversation with someone who isn't... Um, here to discuss politics in any way, shape, or form. I just... Fair enough. Yeah. If that's you want to go about it. Now, but I was really not trying to get into the politics of it. I wanted to focus on the collective consciousness um, aspect of it because uh, it does um, have that kind of a, a feeling when these things happen on a massive scale and it affects all of us at a, at a great level. And... Um, what does it right, look like? What, what would... What would it look like for things to be not chaotic for you? What, how would that show up for you? Well, wouldn't it be nice if we could have all the technology released, which would allow us to quit our nine to five jobs and make money obsolete and provide everything that everybody needs and then some so we can all uh, live peacefully without having to worry about a control system trying to only get out technologies that keep us... Uh, getting from point A to point B in the most unconstructive manner, which is what oil and coal basically does. I mean, uh, Nick, Donald Trump's uncle was one of the people who um, took Nikola Tesla's technology. You know, Nikola Tesla, he wanted to uh, tap into the consciousness of the earth, the electrical energies and all to give to everybody. And you have to wonder, maybe Donald Trump wants to do that for everybody and he's chopping at the bit to do it, but he's got forces that won't let him do it. And um, well, maybe it, it could happen and I hope it does happen soon. But my idea of a, of a great world would be one where we could um, 
not have to worry about having to worry about survival and pay mortgages and all that. Alex Collier, the um, prominent ET contactee, has said many times, we are the only civilization in the Milky Way that I know of that uses money. And how can you not hear him say that and think, well, God damn it, it's time for us to join the rest of the club and, and make money obsolete. Well, how can we make money obsolete when we still have a control system over us that's trying to <laughs> suppress our free will and, and then some? So, well, apparently the, the word on the street is this whole civilization shut down. There's a lot going on behind the scenes to shut them down. And uh, everybody can only do so much. And one person can't change the world. It, it's not like that. I mean, every, every individual human is like a small part within the greater Mandelbrot set. So you can't change the world by meditating in, in nature. You... Uh, it's got to be a lot more prominent than that, and uh, but you can still do things at an individual level for yourself. So, um, I don't know, I babbled and digressed a lot, but I guess the, uh, does that answer your question regarding how I want humanity to, to go, to be able to get free from money, free from enslavement, and get everything that they need and join the rest of the club that doesn't use money and, and, th and that... I had more cohesive conversations with my mother when she was dying of Alzheimer's. I'm sorry. I didn't understand anything. Honestly, I'm, I'm really trying to be really aligned here and be very respectful, but um, I, I don't think that this is progressing in any manner that is going to be of any use to anyone. I, I don't, I don't, I don't engage the energy of, of what's being perpetuated. At, to me, that's why it's perpetuating. And the collective consciousness that is truly in centered balance and trending centripetal would know how to apply bondas when they're inundated with these kind of energies. They would know what to do. And so we don't allow people to come in and hijack our peace. We maintain the integrity of our equanimity because that is not for you to take from anyone or anyone else. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm just here as a fully cleared psychic medical and non-medical intuitive that's trying to help people get plugged back in and not continue to perpetuate that they should get unplugged and feel these fears. I want people to be able to be plugged in and understand how to use their gifts that are beyond the senses so that they'll know truth. And then there's nothing to fear because then you know truth. And truth has got no charge. It's not good or bad. It's not positive or negative. It's at the center point. And so, you know, if, if you're finding that yourself to be so highly charged, you know, look at that book and then write your own in response to it because the world needs people that are freedom fighters. We need that. I'm not a freedom fighter like that. I'm a person that's over here trying to help people get plugged in to bring in the hue part of humanity, the H-U-E part, the electrical part, the plug it in part, the are you in your best self part, the, you know, we don't play Dewey, Cheatham, and how anymore. It's, it's how can we serve? And that's it. That's as political as I'd like to get, if, if that would be okay with Yes, yes, I will respect your your wish there. So moving on to another area, meditation. Um, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that can benefit from from meditation. Um, like David Icke, if he wasn't so conspiratorial all the time, he'd med if he meditated more, he wouldn't have think of a conspiracy and everything. Uh, well, then again, uh, there are people that do uh, other things besides meditate, like um, with their hands in a lotus flower position, bodies in a lotus flower position, and do other things that could be considered meditating. And they still call it meditating, even though it's not the stereotypical lotus flower position of meditation and i myself when i was doing yoga tai chi and aikido um before this um civilization shutdown happened i was um uh, i found like the urge to meditate less because I, it's like the martial arts of tai chi and aikido and um yoga all the body poses is a nice um other way of meditating or a, a way to 
or, or another style that could make take the place of meditating and you don't really need to um one could say you don't really need to make your life extremely complicated by trying to do every single thing that you could possibly do to enhance yourself spiritually it's better to do every little bit here every little bit there maybe um yoga one day tai chi another day meditation another day and whatnot but i did notice that when i took up yoga tai chi and aikido that my desire to sit like in a lotus flower position and go um like it seemed to go away a little bit and i'm sure it was because i was doing other things to connect with source so is that a reasonable way of making sense of why i felt a uh less of a nerd should meditate because i was taking up those other things all right well the only input I have there is you might want to consider starting one of those back up really soon because I think it's going to really help you, man. I think it's going to calm that mind. Maybe do some eye exercises to calm it. You know, find your breath, man. You know, it's that's life. <sighs> well, I do uh, have been doing a little lightsaber work. Uh, big Star Wars fan, I figured a Jedi lightsaber work may actually be a good substitute, and I would have wanted to get into archery and hitting the bullseye, because my, like maybe I'm crazy and off my hinges, but my father is a, um, is a Sagittarius, and I never really got along with him well. He's a, in Chinese Zodiac, I'm a tiger, and he's a monkey, and they don't really get along well, but I'm in Western astrology, he's a Sagittarius, and I'm an Aries, we should get along well, and I'm thinking, well, maybe if I take up archery, like Sagittarius the archer, and learn to hit the bullseye, maybe I, I can find the Sagittarius love within myself and be able to get with my father a little bit better. So <laughs> maybe that's a crazy way of look, uh, crazy excuse to take up archery, but I don't know. I mean, is learning how to hit a bullseye with an arrow maybe not as good as Robin Hood? But certainly, uh, it's definitely an art that can get you far. If you can hit the bullseye with an arrow, um, you can do a lot of other things, maybe. is It can pave the way for a lot of other potential things. Do you agree or uh, uh, disagree? I, and I'm I, I kind of in a, in a big state of a, a, like wonderment. Um, you know, if you're able to spend time with your father, which is kind of what I was able to extrapolate from all of that, that's a gift that some people don't have. So ask the questions now and learn everything you can because you learn a lot more by listening than you do by talking. Yes, yes. And uh, well, uh, people have both accused me of um, trying to confuse myself to the point where I don't really listen as much as well as I should because I'm thinking too much about pe what people are telling me and it's um and I'm confusing the issue and making things more complicated well as so, if that is the case do you have advice for someone like I who finds himself having difficulty listening sometimes to someone because I hear something and I instantly try to try to make sense of it and think uh, how to combine it with other things Instead yeah. of, uh, well, Make what can little... I do to just calm down at the moment and listen to everything rather than and think I have to try to focus on something he just said with something else that I've heard in the past? If you. Well, I hear you. Yeah. And I want you to know that I'm acknowledging you and I am far from trying to minimize. Um, but there is a, a, an offering because, you know, you, you are interviewing some really good people. Um, and so sometimes when people are not able to be um, present with their breath, that is actually starving oxygen from the brain. And we don't need to fill the space with words. We just have to go to the breath because words aren't life. We should be in a telepathic community in telepathic communication anyhow. So words are just sacred geometry in the form of a vocalization in one aspect. And learning to find silence and still point is one of the more challenging for most. And, and I knew it was for me until I was forced into it 
with experiencing seizures. And so it was taken out of my control so that the nervous system could rewire from the left brain hemisphere to the right brain hemisphere so that I became what's called right-minded. And I was able to access those parts of myself that bring those clairs forward. And, you know, you're already doing your meditation and you're already trying to get, you know, grounded. And, and I see that you're a seeker. Um, but sometimes as a seeker, we have to know when, when to stop. And sometimes we have to know when to drop. And sometimes we have to know when to roll because rolling will calm the nervous system as well. And so to stop and, and breathe and close the eyes. And if you still have agitation, then add movements with your eyes closed. You know, you inhale, your eyes go up into your forehead and then you do three eye rotations to the left and they're slow and they're meaningful. And the first circle is just like a swoop. And then the second one sort of digs into the corners of the circle. And then the third one is another swoop and that, that clears the past. So you've energetically kind of gone into an etch-a-sketch mode with your mental mind to clear that shit from your limbic brain so that you've just cut that reality. That's the chance offering. Or you could continue to ruminate into the past. Or and then you inhale once again with the eyes closed and the eyes go up into the forehead and then you make three slow eye rotations to the right. Same principle, the first one is a big giant circle the second one kind of takes the eyes into each corner and that's where energy gets stuck. That's where it gets stagnant. That's where information is. You're not going to have it when everything's going good. And then that third circle is that sort of final circle. And if you could learn, um, Andrew, to do this in just a real, you know, in a place of comfort and not having to do anything, you don't have to respond to anything. You don't have to react to anything it's going to get you to a place where then you can kind of go through the structure of your head and is your jaw soft? Is your tongue floating? Maybe it presses lightly to the roof of the mouth. Maybe you have to float the jaw left and right and right and left. And then you check in with the structure of the rest of your system because see, we have sonar inside of us, just like um, the, the, the dolphins mar maritime life. So our structure is used through sonar through our joint system. So when you soften your jaw, your shoulders soften. When your shoulders soften, your elbows soften, and so on and so forth, and et cetera, et cetera, like the king and I said, right? And you just, you, you find this place where you chill out. And, and you're not going to get information from a place of panic or fear or chaotic. It's not to say that stuff isn't happening in the world and nobody has a Pollyanna complex and there is no judgment and there's no ostrich with their head in sand anywhere. There's just awareness of the energy and it isn't being labeled. And then you are in control of your equanimity unless you aren't. And if you aren't, you have to ask yourself, who are you giving power to? And take that shit back. Very good advice there, I must say. And, uh, well, out of curiosity here, on the resources tab on your website, um, the page doesn't seem to be um, there. If you click on this solar system exploration, the sun, but if you are a space cadet of sorts, I guess we could um, spend a little time talking about this. Is there a reason why this is um, up here? Because I got a few things to talk about regarding outer space that are worth um that are worthwhile for making for an interesting radio conversation here. So well, um, tell you, I'm a real big believer in sun gazing and um, I've so been... am I. Yes. And by the way, my mother is an ophthalmologist. You have no idea how much she's bitched at me for it. <laughs> so well, um, I understand it and it isn't for the faint of heart and you really do know how, know how need to know what you're doing and how to do it appropriately. Um, but I, I was a, a breatharian for three and a half years. I was a full Anadian practice, but I lived in an environment where it was feasible. I live in southeastern Florida, so I lived near a levee, which is where I was able to see the sun crest at the end of every day. And then I would get the um, spectrum of light in the reverse order. So I was getting my chronic nourishment in that manner. 
And then um, after I would take my daughter um, to school, if it was my day to take her, or if it wasn't, I would go out to the beach in the morning to see and experience sunrise. Now, sometimes that being said, I only had 30 seconds, but if you do it in a state, as you know, from gratitude, if you are able to have your feet properly grounded, and if you can't, I had earthing shoes, so I used those too, um, but I used a certain kind of water and I did it a certain amount of time if I could and that was all I ate and um, again that's what helped me start to have much higher consciousness I mean again I am um, I, I, I was reasonably you know like I said I, I didn't have uh, the main bones in my body it's just I didn't utilize higher consciousness to a great degree when I was in the corporate world I I had certain aspects that I did and didn't know how I used them, but it really wasn't until I became a sun gazer and an earther and really mindful. And then I, afterwards I reintegrated food, raw foods, and then um, just a vegan diet and then vegetarian diet. Boy, that's a nutrition is a whole thing. I mean, that's voltage, that's life. That's what feeds our energy body. So higher consciousness. That's definitely an aspect or, or a, a, a freeway. It's a highway there. It's absolutely a highway, freeway. Um, that's our Wi-Fi. It, it, it's almost criminal that that software and hardware companies are able to charge us for Wi-Fi when it's really just part of our automatic system. <laughs> You're right about the Tesla part in that regard. But I use it in my practice. Most of the 30, is it 30 some odd, uh, Joyce, 30 mm -hmm. some odd, I think I have 30 mm -hmm. some odd, you know, devices and most of them have a Tesla coil and I was trying to make friends with them. I, uh, when I first built onto the back of my place, I used Edison bulbs to try to light it up and I was going to use Tesla technology and Edison bulbs, but the Edison bulbs broke. They didn't make it, but those Tesla things, they're still rocking it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Now, since you're um, sun gazing, you say that there's a proper way to do it. A lot of questions raised about this. You got some people that take it to an extreme, like Chief Golden Light Eagle and his um, Native American tribes people. They actually have not just the first hour of sunrise and the last hour of sunset when the UV index is at zero, where they say it's safe to do with the open eyes. He has them do it in the middle of the day on summer solstice for crying out loud. And he makes the assertion that if you're in the right state of mind and you have and you're in control of your consciousness enough, then you're not going to suffer any vision damage and all the electromagnetic energy from the sun and your body is held together to a great extent by electromagnetism. In theory, if you are in the right state of mind and having control of your consciousness, you should be able to fully um, recharge your battery, so to speak, through sun gazing with open eyes, even in the middle of the day. But others have asserted, no, 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 that the human body isn't really adept to be able to do that. Better to do it with the eyes closed in the middle of the day. And, Absolutely. Um, I mean... You know, I can't even imagine anybody not saying it's not just the eyes closed. The eyes need to be closed and up as far up into the forehead as you can possibly take it. And then if you really want to, you can make little V's with your first finger and your middle finger and pull the skin down. And so expose the lower portion of the ocular nerve and then take in the nutrient that way. Mm -hmm. But I mean, honestly, the first couple of minutes at sunrise, the last couple of minutes at sunset, you know, it's the gluttonous ones that think that they have to do it for long. And honestly, when I was healing, I could tell, like, I could do it less and less and less. My cup got filled because it's just synthesizing the D hormone inside of us. We have all got D deficiency, period. End of subject. Everybody needs, you know, 50, 100,000 volumes. I don't even know what the number is. We need it. And we need that for photosynthesis of our tree of life, which is in our body. Well, it's not just vitamin D. Um, 
sun gazing is also uh, said that your body has the ability to convert the um, sunlight into other um, nutrients. Like if you're uh, like a starving Ethiopian child in Africa, wouldn't it be great if we could uh, teach them how to sun gaze so they wouldn't be so hungry all the time? They could uh, sun gaze for a change when there's no food available and they would... Uh, their appetite would go down and they'd be getting nourishment from the sun. I mean, it's not the same, but it's better than better than nothing, better than um, what they often have to go through. D do you know anything about sun gazing being able to um, provide other nu nutrients other than vitamin D? Because I've heard it does that. Your body has the ability to do that, and there's a conspiracy of sorts to cover that up to keep people from realizing that sun gazing and the body can do that. Nutrients well, other our than body can heal itself. Our body can heal itself, period. So it doesn't matter, you know, if you've got one person saying that it's this amount and another person saying it's that amount, I don't care. It is irrelevant. In order for us to synthesize like a plant, we need a certain amount of sun. We need a certain amount of it. And in the event that you want to have a little bit uh, faster healing, I mean, sun gazing is basically holistic chemotherapy. Yes, and um, this uh, time of year, it's gonna getting harder and harder to uh, sun gaze in the middle of the day as the days get light. Um, out of curiosity, uh, sun gazing through a window, um, does a window, like really, if you were to want to sun gaze with open eyes through a window, does the window block out the UV to make it safe to do that, or is that really not, the, uh, not good enough? It doesn't block out the UV light enough to be able to well i mean i think you're going to have western medicine telling you one thing i think you're going to yeah. have eastern medicine telling you another thing i think it depends on what aligns best with you and here's how you know you try it it's just like yoga if i said you know roll the window down and blink 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 it might feel a certain way if you roll the window up and blink 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 you might not get the nutrients but it might be as best you can get people have to learn to to if it is to be, it is up to me. That's how I started this whole thing. People have to learn to be a lot more sovereign and experience and then notice the experience and become very aware of the experience and be able to rule out what doesn't work. You move the chess pieces off the chessboard. I mean, it's just that simple, you know, try it. You, you say you like it, you say you do it, then, you know, do what works for you. And if you're gonna start doing it, you certainly don't wanna start doing it at noon anywhere. <laughs> I mean, that's just, and, and also maybe start by doing it with the moon. Maybe that would be a little bit less harsh. Um, the full moon is coming and it's a really great way to, um, to also moon gazing is far, um, uh, you know, far more comforting in a sense, if you're gonna start that way. Hmm. I was going to tell you when the next full moon is. It's on October 1st. So it's on Thursday, October 1st. You've got just under a week. If you want to start doing it, um, you know, maybe do your own research. That's the beauty. I mean, we don't have to get in a, ask our parents to get in a car to drive us to the library to look up something. We've got it at our fingertips. Google it, what it's like to do a moon bath, what it's like to do moon gazing. Go out there, make a fire. Don't make a fire. Take a candle. Gaze into a candle, for goodness sakes, versus going to an extreme of looking at the sun. That's called traw talk. It's going to strengthen the pineal gland, and it's going to be able to open up consciousness. It might cause tearing in the eyes, but for goodness sakes, we have these two eyes, but we also have inner vision. And so we want to make sure that we take care of our physical eyes. And I'm sure your mother, who is a doctor of ophthalmology, you know, doesn't love the idea of sun gazing in any way, shape or form. And, and, and she would be right if it's not done properly. And but she would be, you know, open if she could understand the aspects that are a little bit more of a kinder and gentler approach. I just I just don't, you know, I don't agree with the all or nothing, you know, format of doing things by restriction. And uh, so I just invite people to do, to kind of enter into maybe a softer constitution with themselves and have a little, 
bit of a better um, approach. Uh, you know, don't beat yourself up of, of stuff. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, that full moon, that's in my sign of Aries, and I've been hearing a lot of things saying the next three months for me are going to be uh, uh, three months to remember. Even my maternal grandmother on the other side, who the psychic was uh, channeling on Mother's Day, um, said that I'm going to be a completely different person in November. Well, this isn't about glorifying me on this show. This is about uh, interviewing you and seeing what you have to say, but interesting you pointed that out, that the, yeah, the full moon, October 1st, and... Um, I also have a date with the my pediatrician that day, and um, they say like you've talked about Western medicine is all uh, um, yeah the guy who was my pediatrician um, when I was a young kid, and now uh, he's my regular medical doctor um, now um, for checkups, and I kind of try to shy away from seeing him because uh, I don't really know if I need to, but they always say. Uh, you want to try to see the doctor once a year, what harm can it do? Well, if Western medicine is all screwed up relative to the other medicines, then what's the point? Let me ask you that question. What's the point? Do you think maybe there's really any point in me going to see my um, the guy who was my pediatrician when I was a, um, a kid and uh, now my regular doctor now as an adult? Um, it's really important seeing him because he's all Western medicine and he's uh, brainwashed to the point where he thinks that Bill Gates vaccines are good for you when they're not. <laughs> and um, I mean, how, well, do, I how mean, do, I... do you feel that you would feel better if you went to go see him? I uh, uh, kind of indifferent towards it. Towards he's it. a nice he's guy. Right. Nice having a chat with him and all that. But at the same time, uh, well, yeah, you're, I, I realize it's reasonable for you to say it's not why you asking me. This is your decision. So um, I respect that and all. But um, when I, but then again, I, I'm ask, I can't help but ask this for the sake of all those people who try to make sense of um, whether or not Western medicine is, is really um, a waste of our time. Because, uh, I mean, what, what, what good is it really for um, when one can almost certainly make the argument that that non-Western medicine is always going to be better in almost every single field. What exceptions are there to that? Do well, you know I think of any? in an emergency situation, I'm certainly glad that there's doctors and that there's hospitals and ERs and emergency rooms and trained physicians and trained nurses and trained staff and specialties. I think that there is an absolute um, way for it and, and place for it. it the, 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 the danger of Western medicine is that it was not meant to be uh, linked in perpetuity to pharmaceuticals. That was not why Western medicine was created. It was done at of absolute noble causes. It's the pharmaceutical industry that is the benefit. So when, you know, you and I were maybe reasonably young and before we even hit double digit ages, chances are in your bathroom was baby aspirin, aspirin, and mercurochrome. And there yes, really wasn't but... a need for much else. Right, and right, if right. there was, we would go to the hospital, it would be treated, we would come home, there'd be a dose of an antibiotic. There wasn't a probiotic because we didn't have pesticides sprayed all over the you know, kingdom come on our food. We got the nutrition that we needed, even with an ignorant, um, mindset of parents who were, you know, indoctrinated into sometimes giving us like, you know, maybe those frozen hungry jacks and we put ourselves in front of a TV and, you know, we got indoctrinated in our, I always say that's the first 12 step program for anybody. It's first through 12th grade. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it, 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 we still made it, but now it's, you know, as soon as something happens, here's a pill for that and here's a pill for the other. And um, that is not Western medicine. That's um, greed, and that's the pharmaceutical industry, and and that's 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 killing people. That's that's genocide, and um, <laughs> that's just plain wrong. Yes, uh, definitely um, not worth it to be taking all those psychiatric um, medicines. Uh, and yet there's a place for it. Again, same thing. Like if it's going to help somebody trend center right away, there's a place for it. And then you introduce something like maybe the brain tuner 
um, seven, and that's just where they have the little electrodes that go behind the ears in a salt solution, and it will help the brain hemispheres communicate in a harmonic capacity between the right and left hemispheres. So then that means that eventually the person can come off the medicine and eventually the person can no longer have to use this machine and they're just another wonderful peaceful non-honking member of society right um but we all need help and the thing is is that nobody knows that there's a lot of these things that are out there that are available and that they're affordable and that you can bring yourself back from death and destruction and decay and dire i mean you know, I know I, for one, have had those experiences as an experiencer traveling the other side from death experience, near death experience, out of body experience, whatever you want to call it. But I know what that's like to have pain and, and also to have the pain of not wanting to be here anymore because of the physicality of the pain when I did come back too. So, you know, there's a lot of people that are struggling with mental illness right now as opposed to focusing on what's causing it. I try to offer solutions in tandem with other people that are professionals that can actually hold space, you know, psychiatrically with uh, yeah, other ways, but I try to help them hold space working on their uh, precursor system, their bioenergy field, get them plugged back in so that everything about their body is a little toaster from head to toe. Right, right. But um, one question that I've uh, heard asked about how we can handle illnesses and all that, I mean, I remember having Will Spencer, the body electrician, on my show, and he seemed to, like, contradict himself um, in a couple areas. I mean, when I was talking about Lyme disease, he was um, saying that the ticks may have uh, been infected, but then he was, um, later in the interview, he was also saying that the Lyme bacteria, it's actually airborne, and... Uh, everything biological is airborne, and he would he make the assertion that you can get Lyme disease from breathing the bacteria through the air as much as you can getting bitten by a tick. Um, and he asserted that the disease is not really so much the, um, the germ, the virus, whatever you want to call it. It's actually your body's inability to... to keep a stable level to be able to deal with it being there. I, I don't know if that's the proper way of phrasing it, but um, I mean, and well, also the whole- is that interesting? Um, I don't really know if there's a question there, but it, you know, I think everybody's gonna have a difference of opinion on a lot of different subjects. And you just kind of have to know which ones have meaning and which ones, you know, you collapse into. Uh, you know, I, I just kind of move on from that. Uh, yeah, Lyme disease is, is, a, is a gnarly is a gnarly thing, but there there are some things that can be done that are most people aren't going to be wanting to do, and uh, you might might save your life. But yes, yes, and, and uh, uh, the yeah, uh, uh, oh, hear myself echo in the background. It's so annoying. Um, but anyhow, um, the. Uh, virus that we're dealing with in the um, the world today the best way to deal with it seems to be whatever sweden is doing with their herd mentality um thing that's the way it should be done but that's uh, not the way we're being uh, led to do it by those who want to brainwash us like gates and fauci and and whatnot it's so definitely nefarious people at the helm of a lot of things but again i just don't allow that to hijack me um in any you know way shape or form i know that there's frequencies i know that there's things and aspects that you can do between using um helichrysum and or helichrysum and cystus oils you can run frequencies uh there's so many things that 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 can prevent it but the most important is to have the mental capacity to know that you didn't have a contract with it and go get your immune system and and, and get it better if you have to go get a little tiny rebounder or trampoline because you don't want to go walk outside then go pedal on that go do something get moving because an immune system that's healthy will not get sick 
And that is, I think, a really good time to end on that note, because I really believe that that if, if I can say anything at all is just if anybody wants to feel better, increase your movement, get yourself out there, move that body, move that mind, and then find stillness. You'll sleep better. Mm-hmm. Thank you so okay. much for having me. Yeah. So you want any interview now at this point, I will respect that if that's why you want to cut it short at this uh, hour and a half um, level. There could have been other things worth talking about, but if you want to um, cut it at this point, I will respect that. I will upload this to YouTube by um, hopefully by midnight tomorrow at the absolute latest, and I will send you the the link as well. So um, anything else you want to get out, your contact info and all that, and, and yeah, you, you can make you a can. sales pitch out of this too, by the way, if you want to, if that's the proper word word for me to use sales pitch. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, thank you. I mean, everybody can reach out to me, um, you know, via social media. Um, you can send me a private message. You can reach me through uh, beyondtransformation.org or quantumshiwa.com. Or you can reach me um, just um, at my email, which is bread, B-R-E-A-D, and A-N-N-E, butters, B-U-T-T-E-R-S, at gmail.com and thank you Joyce and thank you Andrew for having us on here and 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 uh, you know I just wish you a, a lot of peace and maybe go back and, and practice doing some of those eye exercises and maybe we can get together another time and you can tell me how it might impact you because I would be interested to see if that helps in any way yes yeah. uh, de- definitely, definitely worth uh, looking into and uh, my apologies if I made you uncomfortable with any of the uh, political stuff that I talked about, but that's just me trying to be artistic and connecting all sorts of different things and all that. And um, I'm glad you were able to go with the flow with it and all that and make a great interview out of this. So um, Thank you very take much. care. Namaste. Enjoy the rest of your trek without infinite consciousness. I will send you the link to this after it's uploaded. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.